Welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. This is ground zero for our New Hampshire postmortem. And there's no one I'd rather talk about the live free or die state than Charlie Hurt. He's the opinion editor at the Washington Examiner. He's also a Fox News contributor, and he is my friend. And earlier he was wearing camouflage, though he has disrobed <laughs> from his overcoat. <laughs> I'm surprised you could see the camo. That's uh, the, the camo whole point was of the camo. Yeah. Was like, I didn't know. Camo. I just, I was like, oh, Charlie's wearing the wall. And then I realized <laughs> that you, in fact. But it's weird because in New York, it doesn't really work. It's like everybody sees it. And they're mm-hmm. like, that guy is about to uh, shoot up the place. Yeah. If, if the FBI had their way, they would <laughs> go into your Zell trades and make sure that you were arrested because you had to have had some part yeah. in January 6th. But see, the good thing is if you're in Iowa or you're in New Hampshire, it fits right in. Yes, Everybody's because like, you're a, oh, normal a normal person who enjoys right. the outdoors. Right. The real conservationists, hey, as I like right. to call them. Exactly. People have actually been yeah. outside. Exactly. And know what should be. Why concerned. is that? Why is it the people we get the worst lectures about the environment, they live in New York City. And I'm like, what? This is a shit. This is a, a shit hole yeah shit hole yeah. this is a dump it's you you and and it's it's, it's like amazing to me it's like if you you could come to my little farm mm-hmm. and there's like nature everywhere mm-hmm. and I, I i i've never have understood that also it's like like half the island is built on a um on a landfill mm-hmm. right it's like garbage the other half an Actually, ancient burial ground <laughs> But I, I've always thought that that was very odd because the ultra progressive greenies yeah. like to tar conservatives as being anti conservationist when they are the ones who spend much more time in nature. If they actually went to parts of the country where there were concentrations of redness, they would find people who hunt and hike and fish yeah. and surf and do all of these great fun things. And they would very much like to preserve the elements that they have enjoyed their entire lives. They just want to do it through innovation and the natural forces of the free market, as opposed right. to these superimposed regulations from the federal government, which end up being failures, as you're yeah. seeing Ford and other auto manufacturers shelve their EVs for hybrids, which are right. a much better choice for a right. majority of people. Yeah, it's like it's and that's why at the end of the day, it really does. It, it's it's as old as human nature. It just comes down to power. Mm. These people, they don't care about the actual environment. No. They just care about power mm-hmm. and they want to uh, assemble as much power for themselves and make these rules. Uh, and they're not not because they care about. But again, not because they care about the outcome, but because they care about their own power. And then young people fall for it and this is our fault actually young people fall for it because nobody like points it out to them Mm -hmm. and they and they get sucked into the the the, like the the uh more powerful uh you know influence as opposed to like having normal conversations and you're like oh wow you mean i could actually just go live in the country Mm -hmm. and enjoy nature and and save the butterflies one at a time one at a time yeah and you could have your own bee farm which would be yeah. really exciting, but you do have to wear the suit. So let's talk about New Hampshire. Let's talk, I, I just want to talk about the Republican side because Joe Biden is obviously going to be the Democrat nominee. Um, Nikki Haley's team has painted this as a win. She's still in the race. <laughs> and what I said the other day was it's actually worse for her to lose South Carolina by yeah. 30 points than it is to step out after Iowa and New Hampshire and go, you know what? We really made yeah. some gains here. High five, goodwill. She's yeah. going to go to South Carolina. And I think that will offer her the most reputational damage. What do you think? Agreed completely. Oh, uh, uh, you know, obviously the Republican uh, Republicans always do this thing where whoever w- came in second last time, it's the sort of conservative nature of the non-conservative party. Uh, whoever comes in second, like it gets the, and I think that she's trying to like put an emphasis that she came in second this time, even though she actually came in she's third our Nancy in Iowa. Right? She's our silver medalist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah. And so she, she gave her second sort of delusional speech, like the one after Iowa, where she said, it's a two man race now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, if it's a two man race, you're not in it. Uh, but okay. Um, and then, so then, so, but I, I actually think that, that, it's even worse because if she does go into South Carolina, she will have lost um, Iowa, uh, New Hampshire, and then also Nevada, which is going to because she's not even competing there. Yeah. So she'll be riding into her, her home country with three losses. I think what she and she's already out with an ad. I think that what she's actually going to do because she has my oh also 
If you're wondering what money does for you in politics, this is what money does for you in politics. It gives you options. But I've also read that some of her backers are now doing with her what they did with DeSantis. And, you know, it's it's mutiny. Like once they realize there there's no return on their investment, they bail. Yeah, because it's their money, actually. And they're like, okay, we're not we're not going to. That's why rich people are rich. (laughs) Exactly. They're not stupid. Uh, with their, at least uh, not when it comes to their money. Although they do, they they do, they pick the worst political candidates. Yes. It's amazing. Did you to me. think? So I had I was one of those people, and maybe I'm suggestible, but I had high hopes for Ron DeSantis because yeah. I just assumed naturally he would run yeah. on his Florida record, and you know, give the country a version of Trumpism without Trump. So, but he was unable to do that. Yeah, but so, was so, that was that because of incompetence? Or just the Trump factor is so overwhelming? What was that? I think it's two things. I think one thing is he's a nerd, which is what you and I like about him. Yes. It's, I love that about him. And and I agree with you. You know, there's never been a guy with a better record, with more accomplishments to point, and more political accomplishments. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- that 22, he, he the, the 2022 results in Florida were amazing. Yes. And, uh, and, and th- that should ha- have, uh, you know, but, but the problem is that, he's not good at retail politics. Mm -hmm. And so, and whether we like that or not, I would rather have someone who's super nerdy on the spectrum who can actually do things than someone who can go into an Iowa diner and kiss a baby, which I think can be creepy. (laughs) Agreed. But that's the, whether we like it or not, that's the system, the way we have it. It's okay. But what's the alternative? There is no alternative. Okay. So our, our election cycles are too long because now Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley are thinking about 2028 when Trump won't be running. Right. But so are Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, you know, Tom Cotton is probably thinking about it. Any notable, slightly visible Republican is going, ah, yeah, 2028 is my time. But two things. One is, uh, you know, DeSantis got ahead of himself Mm -hmm. and he thought that, uh, and and, I mean, you could make the argument that he should have stayed on the sidelines, but but just as a uh, fun little exercise, if he had decided to, let's say Trump was not running this time and he had decided to, to run. I think Ron DeSantis would have won. Interesting. Even if some other people who are more gifted at politics had gotten into the race with him, I still think the accomplishments in Florida and the accomplishments in the election would have uh, people would have looked past the fact. But what about what that about he's, the debate? He's, he's yelling at children for eating ice cream on the which I loved. I yeah. thought it was fantastic. That's going to give you diabetes or whatever mm-hmm. he said. It was hysterical, but. It's also if you're in if you're in the circus that Trump is dominating, it's like it's too easy to sort of fall back on. Oh, that guy's on. You know, there's something wrong with that guy. But I think that. Uh, but I and, and then and then the polls show. Which, and I you know I think polls are absolutely horrible, and I think they're stupid and meaningless. But I do think that the whole concept that he uh, was everybody's second choice mm-hmm. was. Uh, tells you a lot about his future. But the other thing that I would say real quick is that uh, he should have run the campaign that Vivek Ramaswamy ran. He should have run like he had nothing to lose. I was actually surprised that uh, I would assume that Vivek would stay in the race longer than Nikki Haley because he can. Yeah. And yeah. and he was having so much fun. So much fun. Being the conspiracy yeah. theorist and yeah. being the fly in the Vaseline. Yeah. If which you, I, I didn't like him in the debates. Yeah. But I, I liked when he would go and have his own town halls and he yeah. would engage people who disagreed with yeah. him. And then when people would attack him, like the reporter from NBC, and he just unleashed. I love that. But I, I want to talk to you about RFK Jr. Because mm. a lot of my friends who are, some of them are independent, some are libertarians, some are Democrats, not very many are Republicans. They're on the spectrum, as you might say. They, they are many of them on the spectrum. <laughs> Um, the political and the uh, other spectrum, mm-hmm. they like him. So, yeah. so do what I. does he do? But there, there is something about he offers people a version of America that they have not been given. They are being condescended yeah. to by the establishment. Yeah. And he is confident enough to not need this, uh, to have come from a political family. So he's been steeped in it. Yeah. And He's actually doing his homework and he is willing to fight the establishment from 
within. And that's attractive to people who feel like they're being lied to, yeah. not fought for. Well, two things. One is he gives us a version of the Democrat Party that we both admire very much, a true like classical liberal who is suspicious of authority. I mean, I love everything. I, I mean, I, I, you know, politically, I'm probably not really aligned with him, but like in another world, I, I have Trump happens to scratch all my itches, and I think it's hysterical. And for all of his flaws, there's I, I still I think he's good for the system because he's such a. You can a, see a dermatologist and get framed for <laughs> many of those itches. He is a uh, he is a shock to the system that needs to be shocked, and mm -hmm. I, so I like. A, but in a world without Trump, I could totally see myself getting behind a guy like RFK, mm -hmm. but, but partly because he is a true liberal in that he, uh, that, that, that I respect, like take the environment stuff, you know, uh, the part of environmentalism that we can all agree upon is that guy has devoted his life to cleaning up the Hudson river, mm -hmm. like, like actually taking crap out of the Hudson river. I have no, I have much more respect for that for, yeah. for looking at a problem and coming up with solutions, yeah. which it's is not now incidental in yeah. politics. Like it, it literally happens in politics because we become obsessed with this idea of whether or not someone would either nuke China or right. we could have a beer with them. Right. Well, and, and it's not, and, and that's the environmental movement, not about power. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to control your it's lives. Pragmatic. Yeah, it's pragmatic. And, and they want to actually like clean stuff up, which makes a whole lot more sense. And it's like, it's like we were talking about a minute ago where, you know, you walk around New York City and I'm just like, Really? You're going to lecture us that you li have literal bum dump on the side on the sidewalk. Yeah. And you're going to lecture me about my land that is like pristine and clean and has like wildlife everywhere. Yes, but if you dig a pond, you'll right. be fined right. $10,000 a day. Oh, don't even get me started on that. That one is the and, and the argument that they make is and, and it's always this zero sum most depressing solution thing. So you build a pond, which by the way, we used to like love people to build ponds. And there are a lot of very good reasons for building, uh, I'm building a pond ponds. fan. Yes. Ponds and lakes, like uh, I'm all in. But so, but the argument they, and, and of course they use satellites mm -hmm. now and uh, in, in order to like monitor people's land. Mm -hmm. And if they catch you building a pond, they will, they will find you out of existence. But their argument is that it raises the temperature by like two degrees of creeks. That, and it's like, okay, well, why don't you come up with a solution where you where you drain the pond from the bottom, mm -hmm. and then you could lower the temperature if you wanted to. But that's not what they they, they don't care about. That it's all about power. They yes. just want to take away all enjoyment. And by the way, ponds are really good for wildlife. Like if you want a pond in your pasture, it's it's a better way to water your cows. Mm -hmm. But it's also really great for the butterflies and the birds Aww. and the ducks. Yeah. And if you want to- All you have to do is spend time in Africa yeah. and, and, you know, go to these watering holes and, mm. you know, go go observe them after the dry season. Yeah. Because it turns out that animals need yeah. water. And of course- Shocking. You know, they're, but it, it everything is a cycle, but they want to take elements out of the cycle, which throws us into imbalance. But I feel like as a whole, we are imbalanced politically. Yeah. Will we? Will we ever- lower the temperature, not in our own political creek, but among families and, and people who used to be comfortable disagreeing. And now if, if you disagree with someone about politics, you are literally Hitler. Yeah. Will that ever get better? Uh, I hope so. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I know this, and you, you may disagree with me about this, but you know, one of the things like with Trump, and I, and I get it, you know, the guy can be, he is so caustic and he is such a dick. And I, you know, I, I, I get it, whatever. But, you know, when you look at what they have done to him through the, the legal process. That's why he's still here. That's yeah, why he's, it's why still, he's popular. still here. But also. But Every time they go after him in a new way, it, it brings people who were skeptical yeah. of his personality back into the fold because they feel defensive on his behalf right. because if they're using all of the columns against him, right. imagine what they can do right. to but, you. But a lot of that is a is just a, a guttural reaction, and there, people aren't really thinking it through. But I I would actually take it a step further and think about it and and make the argument a little bit more um, uh, specifically, which is to say that you know this is this is no way to run politics, and if you let 
Democrats in Atlanta, in Washington, D.C., in New York City get away with winning an election this way, yeah. they'll never run politics or in another way. In Colorado. And so to, to, I have a, I have a yeah. real problem with but, that. But to, so to answer your question, my hope is that that w- that if you if you force them, if you force people, if you break them from being able to play politics this way, then maybe and then and then Trump retires, goes away, then maybe the temperature does drop. And as as I pointed out a, a couple weeks ago uh, in a column, you know if if they had just <laughs> if they had just let Trump run his course, Mm -hmm. he would be leaving politics right now as opposed to uh, ramping up for another term. It's like the old country song. If I had shot her when I met her, I'd be out of jail by now. (laughs) Charlie Hurt. On that note, we conclude this podcast. Thank you so much for being part of Kennedy oh, Saves the World. Oh my goodness. It's so good to see you. It's always, always good to see you. I love talking politics. There's a lot we don't agree on, but that doesn't matter because we love... Well, as you know, I'm a Kennedy for president. And you're you're the else. one Kennedy. You're the one Kennedy I could get behind. Well, I, it, you know, there have been people talking about a Kennedy on Kennedy ticket. And uh, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, the, the shirts would you like him that print much? themselves. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think I would yeah. vote for him at this point. Yeah. I just, I understand why people are drawn to him. I understand yeah. why people are protective of Trump. No, I, I understand why people are enthusiastic about Trump because they were sold a bill of goods with Biden. He yeah. lied to them. He continues to lie to them. He does Kareem Jean-Pierre, Jake Sullivan, like they should all be ashamed of themselves and held accountable. But also, don't forget, Trump is as much a rejection of the Republican Party as he is a rejection of the Democrat Party. Yeah, I remember that issue of National I mean, Review. Remember, they had 1,700 yeah. essays like, yeah. here's why Donald yeah. Trump is an yeah. a-hole. Yeah. Brought to you by David Bowes and David and, French and every other yeah. disgruntled David. And I'm like, stipulated, he is. <laughs> Next topic. Noted. <laughs> All right, thank you, Charlie. Good to see you. This has been Kennedy Saves the World, along with Charlie Hurt. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network. 